So one of the most common things people want to learn in software development seems to be servers. So what is a server? Well, the word can mean a multitude of things. Wikipedia will tell you it's a computing term from queuing theory and uh, it dates all the back to the 50s and there are references to it in RFC 5, which is a very early RFC from 69. Nice. So that's an RFC for ARPANET, the predecessor to our internet. Modern use of server refers to the client-server model. So a server provides services to clients. Those are generic terms and it's a general model and it's often used ambiguously to mean a great many different things. So I will try to cover some of the most common ones. One, any computer that provides services over a network to clients, regardless of the hardware type. Two, so it can be a computer built with server-focused hardware as opposed to consumer-grade hardware, typically for a data center. Three, commonly today it means a virtual computer, so an instance inside a larger server and those are often called VPSs, cloud instances, nodes, or something fancy like compute. Fourth, it's also used about software that provides a service to client software. So a network database, a web application, or an FTP server. So entirely devoid of hardware as a concern. So there's a fair bit of variety in the term. It's more confusing in theory than in practice, I think but it's definitely not helpful to beginners when everything's a server. It does make some sense. So you set up your hardware intending a client-server use case, and you set up software built on the client-server model, and they overlap very neatly, and they compose rather well, and most of the time you can treat them as a whole. This is our database server. It runs the database software. Now, virtualization is fun. So you take a larger hardware server, and give it the job of providing the service of many smaller virtual servers. These virtual servers are set up with software to provide a server-style service of some sort, like web, database, SSH. So each layer can be called a server in its own right. It's like nesting dolls. Now, I haven't studied the client-server model as a sort of theoretical construct. I haven't written a paper on it or anything. So I could be wrong about how strict those definitions are. Maybe, maybe this can all be teased apart uh, in the theory space in a better way. But among the humans I know that deal with servers, it's all servers. We call it all servers. So I run an old consumer desktop as a server. I run an old laptop as a server. I have bought a small tower server, actual server hardware, and had that running for a long while in a closet. It got very dusty, but it did its job. It was my server. I bought physical rack mountable servers for work many years back, and I've set those up and handed them to a data center to run. This was before virtualization was mostly a thing, and when the VPSs became undeniable, I started using some of those. And among current cloud providers, I've run EC2 instances from Amazon, I've run Linode, and I've run a bunch I've probably forgotten about now. Now on these, I've run a variety of database servers, web servers, web applications, which are servers, game servers, voice chat servers, more servers than I can remember. So the word server doesn't necessarily say much. Now a server skill set is still incredibly powerful if we decide that it means operating computers that provide services. Now this is often called operations or ops. And arguably when a developer does ops and still does software development, it may be DevOps. Uh, it also may be not. I don't think we should get into that right now because it's a bit of a rabbit hole, but maybe that's a future conversation. Now, I don't include running cables or setting up network gear in knowing servers, but that's because I'm born and raised in web development. We don't typically do that where I'm from. Others will draw those lines differently and they should. So for some types of work, that is absolutely necessary. Now, I call the network level stuff infrastructure and pay for it to be someone else's problem almost entirely, except at home, where I have to set up my own networking. Uh, I swear a lot and I'm 
it turns out I'm horrible at crimping cables. So there you go. So to know servers, what do I think you need to know? I think you should be able to set up a physical or virtual machine for use. I think it's good that you can make it reasonably safe and secure. You'd need to be able to install and configure, that is deploy your software to it. For public production use, so no dev servers, nothing like that, get it properly deployed. And that is what I typically mean by knowing servers. So I hope to show you how I go about setting up a server sometime soon. So keep an eye out for that. I've also talked about servers at some length on the regular programming podcast, episode seven at regprog.com. So maybe check that out if you want to hear more on my thoughts on servers. <laughs>